Hi, I'm Linda. Before I dive into some pretty intense family drama, do me a favor and hit that subscribe button if you're interested in how things unfold. At 41, life threw me a curveball not just with my husband, Jacob, but with his family, too. Things got really complicated when we bought our dream home. It should have been a happy milestone, but it quickly turned into something else. Let's set the scene. Jacob and I were celebrating our new home, a place we envisioned as a peaceful sanctuary from the world. But, of course, Jacob's family had different ideas. His mother and sister have always had this toxic sense of entitlement, acting as though Jacob owes them his every success. My mother-in-law, especially, loves to push boundaries. And my sister-in-law isn't far behind, always scheming. Just when we thought we could finally enjoy our achievement, the bomb dropped. Out of the blue, my mother-in-law came up with a shocking proposal. She suggested that Jacob and I should give up our new home. Why? So we could accommodate her other son, his wife, and their ever-growing family, now expecting their seventh child. They justified this by their financial troubles and the upcoming baby. No heads up, no discussion, just a straight-up demand. I don't understand, Mom, Jacob said during one of our family dinners, the confusion and irritation clear in his voice. Why would you think we'd agree to something like this without even talking to us first? Jacob's mother, always quick with an answer, tried to brush it off. Well, I thought it was obvious. You have the space, and they need it more than you do right now. And you thought it was okay to decide what we should do with our home, without even asking? I couldn't keep the frustration out of my voice. The nerve of her assumption was just astounding. It's family, Linda. You help family, she retorted as if it was the most obvious thing in the world. But at what cost? I shot back. We worked hard for this. It's our home, not a temporary shelter for anyone who needs it. The conversation grew heated as Jacob's sister chimed in, siding with her mother. You guys can easily find another place. We're talking about my brother here, and his kids. But why should we have to move? We planned and saved for years to buy this house, Jacob argued, his patience wearing thin. The back and forth went on, each word adding tension to the air. It was clear we were on different pages, not just about the house, but about respect and boundaries. Jacob and I stood our ground, united against what felt like an ambush. This house represented our future, our stability, and we weren't about to give it up because of unreasonable demands. As the night ended, the rift had deepened, leaving Jacob and me more certain than ever that our path would be one we chose not one dictated by the overbearing will of his family. It was a defining moment for us, setting the stage for the battles that were sure to come. No, Mom, we can't let you dictate our lives like this. It's not fair to Linda or to me, Jacob continued, his voice strong despite the obvious strain. Jacob, this is about family helping family. Why can't you see that? His mother shot back, her voice rising with every word. I do see that but not at the expense of our happiness and stability. You're asking too much, I interjected, feeling my own temper flare. We're supposed to abandon our home just because you've decided it's the right thing to do? Exactly. You have the means to help, Jacob's sister added, leaning forward, her eyes narrow. And what are you going to do? Just watch your nephew and nieces suffer? That's not fair, and you know it, I retorted. It's not about the means. It's about making choices for our own lives. We're not the emergency plan for every family issue. The room fell into a tense silence, the weight of our words hanging heavily between us. Jacob took a deep breath, looking from his sister to his mother. You both need to understand something, Jacob said slowly, making sure his words were clear. Linda and I are a family too. Our decisions are ours to make, not yours to impose. Jacob, I'm your mother. I thought you'd want to help your brother in his time of need his mother replied, her voice softening, trying a different tactic. And I would help him, but not by giving up our home. There are other ways to support family without sacrificing our own needs, Jacob insisted, standing firm. Yeah, like what? You have one of the biggest houses. It's easy for you to say no when you're sitting in your big comfortable home, his sister snapped, frustration evident in her tone. We worked hard for this, Sarah, you know that, I said trying to keep the peace, but standing my ground. We planned and saved for years. Why should we give that up? Because family is supposed to come first, Sarah exclaimed, throwing her hands up. It does, but so does our marriage and our future, Jacob replied. 
we're willing to help in other ways, but not at the cost of our home. The conversation went back and forth, with no side willing to budge. Jacob and I knew this was a turning point in our relationship with his family. If we gave in now, we'd always be expected to sacrifice our needs for theirs. After a long, exhausting debate, it was clear there was no changing their minds. They saw our home as a solution to their problems, not as our hard-earned achievement. Listen, we're not going to agree on this tonight, Jacob finally said, his voice weary. You need to leave. We'll talk more when things have cooled down. His mother and sister collected their things, their faces tight with anger and disappointment. As they left, the door closing behind them felt like a barrier, one that might not be easily reopened. But in that moment, Jacob and I knew we had made the right decision for us, for our future. It was a painful realization, but necessary. We sat back down, the silence a stark contrast to the heated words that had just filled the room. We were together, and that was what mattered. The calm didn't last long. Jacob and I knew it was too good to be true. A brief lull before the inevitable storm. And sure enough, one afternoon, a loud knock disrupted our tranquility. I peered through the window, my stomach sinking as I spotted Jacob's mother and sister at our doorstep, their faces set in determination. Jacob, they're here! I called out, trying to keep the worry out of my voice. He sighed, a deep, weary sound. Let's handle this together, Linda. Opening the door, we faced them, standing firm on our own threshold. You need to leave. You're not welcome here. If you don't, I will call the police, I stated clearly, my heart pounding but my voice steady. You're really going to call the police on your own family? Over what? A house? Jacob's sister spat out, her voice dripping with disdain. It's not just about the house. It's about respect, something you've repeatedly failed to show us, Jacob countered his stance unyielding. We're your family. Doesn't that mean anything to you? His mother chimed in, her tone a mix of anger and desperation. Family doesn't use each other like this. We offered alternatives. You didn't want them. There's nothing more to discuss, I interjected, the finality in my voice mirroring Jacob's earlier decisiveness. We have nowhere else to go. Think of the children, his sister pleaded, her voice cracking under the strain. The children deserve stability, which you need to provide in a way that doesn't involve taking away ours, Jacob replied, his voice softening slightly, but his resolve firm. The conversation escalated as they refused to leave, their demands becoming more insistent. You owe us this, after everything we've done for you. What you've done, manipulated and taken advantage of my generosity? No, we're done. You need to leave now or I'm calling the police, I said, reaching for my phone. Seeing the seriousness in our actions, they finally backed down, but not without hurling a few more hurtful words. You'll regret this. You're tearing this family apart, Jacob's sister yelled as they stormed off. Closing the door, Jacob and I leaned against it, the weight of the confrontation making our knees weak. Are we doing the right thing? I whispered, doubt creeping in. Yes, we are, Linda. It's hard but necessary. For us, for our future, he reassured me, pulling me close. The rest of the day was spent in a somber reflection, the echoes of the confrontation ringing in our ears. Despite the guilt and the pain, there was a sense of righteousness in standing up for our boundaries. We knew the battle might not be over, but we were prepared to defend our peace, no matter what it took. The uneasy peace that followed the confrontation felt fragile, like the calm before a storm. Jacob and I knew it was only a matter of time before something else happened. Our prediction didn't take long to materialize. Late one evening, while we were watching a movie, trying to regain some sense of normalcy, my phone buzzed incessantly. Picking it up, I saw multiple missed calls and messages, all from unknown numbers, but the content was disturbingly familiar. The messages were thinly veiled threats and accusations, clearly orchestrated by Jacob's sister. If you think you've won, you're wrong. This isn't over. Handing the phone to Jacob, I could see the concern etch across his face as he scrolled through. This is harassment. We can't just ignore it, he said, his voice tense with frustration. Let's not give them the reaction they're looking for. We should document everything and talk to a lawyer tomorrow, I suggested, trying to think practically despite the growing anxiety. The next morning, we met with a lawyer, explaining the situation and showing the messages. 
Document everything and consider a restraining order if this continues, the lawyer advised. It's clear that this isn't just family drama. It's turning into harassment. Armed with legal advice, we felt slightly more empowered, but the weight of the family conflict was taking its toll. That afternoon, as we were discussing our next steps, Jacob received a call from his mother. You've taken this too far, letting lawyers get involved. Can't we just talk this out like a family? She pleaded over the speaker. Mom, we tried that. You and Sarah crossed the line with those messages. We're doing what we need to, to protect ourselves, Jacob responded, his tone a mix of sadness and resolve. But we're family. Doesn't that mean anything? Why can't we just solve this between us? Her voice cracked, hinting at desperation. Family doesn't threaten each other. We asked you to respect our decision, and instead we got harassment. This is why we need to set firm boundaries, I chimed in, supporting Jacob. The call ended with his mother in tears, but Jacob held firm. Linda, I hate that it's come to this, but I feel like we have no other choice. I know, Jacob. It's hard, but we need to stand up for our peace. That evening, we implemented additional security measures around our home, including cameras and an updated security system. It was a sad reality to accept that such precautions were necessary, but our priority was to ensure our safety and well-being. Days turned into weeks, and the tension seemed to simmer down. No more messages came through, and the silence from Jacob's family was a bittersweet relief. We began to focus on reclaiming the joy in our home, spending evenings remodeling the kitchen, gardening, or simply enjoying movies without the shadow of conflict hanging over us. Through it all, the trials we faced only strengthened our bond, reinforcing the conviction that our marriage and home were worth protecting, no matter the opposition. Despite the hardships, we remained united, a testament to our love and commitment in the face of adversity. The newfound quiet that enveloped our home allowed Jacob and me to finally relax, enjoying the sanctuary we had fought so hard to protect. However, the peace was disrupted one crisp morning by a familiar car pulling into our driveway. It was Jacob's mother, alone this time, her expression somber and hesitant as she approached our front door. As Jacob opened the door, the tension was palpable. Mom, what are you doing here? His voice was cautious, wary of reigniting past conflicts. I, I've come to apologize, she began, her voice trembling slightly. I've had a lot of time to think about everything that's happened. Listening intently, I remained silent, letting her continue, curious to see where her unexpected visit would lead. Jacob, I realize now how wrong I was, trying to force your hand, pushing Sarah's problems onto you. It wasn't fair, she admitted, looking between us, seeking forgiveness. It took a lot to come here and say that, Jacob acknowledged, his tone softening. Why the change of heart? I missed you and I've seen Sarah start to take responsibility for her own family. It made me realize I should do the same, she explained, her eyes moist with emotion. I appreciate your apology, Mom. It means a lot to hear you say that, Jacob responded, a flicker of old warmth in his words. Turning to me, she added, And Linda, I'm sorry for all the stress I caused you. I hope in time you can forgive me too. Thank you. That's all we ever wanted, to be treated with respect, I said feeling a weight lift off my shoulders, though still cautious about the future. Can we start over? Maybe not like before, but just start somewhere, she asked, looking hopeful yet uncertain. We can try, Jacob agreed, but we're going to need to take it slow. Trust has to be rebuilt. Of course, I understand, and I'll respect your boundaries, I promise, she said earnestly. With that, she left, her visit short but impactful. After she drove away, Jacob and I shared a quiet moment, contemplating the potential thaw in the icy relations that had once seemed unbreakable. Do you think she was sincere? I asked, still processing the morning's unexpected turn. I want to believe she was. People can change, right? Jacob replied, hopeful yet cautious. We'll see. Actions speak louder than words, I noted, the past still too fresh to allow complete optimism. As days turned into weeks, the initial skepticism gradually gave way to cautious optimism. Jacob's mother kept her word, respecting our boundaries and making efforts to mend the fractured relationship. She engaged with us on our terms, calling before visits, and showing genuine interest in our lives without overstepping.
This shift wasn't just in our external relationships, but internally, within our marriage too. The trials we endured with his family had galvanized our bond, proving that together we could face challenges head-on and emerge stronger. We really got through it, didn't we? Jacob remarked one evening as we sat in our garden, enjoying the peace of our hard-earned haven. We did. And we'll handle whatever comes next together, I affirmed, squeezing his hand, the setting sun casting a warm glow over us, symbolizing a new beginning in our lives. The story has come to a close, and Linda and Jacob have navigated through some tough family dynamics to find peace. Now, I have a question for all of you. Do you think it's possible to truly rebuild trust after such deep family conflicts? Or are some rifts too deep to heal completely? What's your take on giving second chances in situations like these?